One of the important elements of my home theater setup where I have a dedicated home theater room and I have a living room where I also consume a bunch of audio video entertainment. They all come down to a commonized kind of rack that serves both of them in different ways is the HDMI cabling and the connections between the, the three points essentially of the system. Uh, for the longest time I've been using these as my long cable run of choice. This is RUI Pro, the blue green HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cables. I actually have been running uh, three of these in the system. Two 33 foot cables that go from the rack up to behind the television. And then I have one longer cable. This one's actually a 65. It's a little longer than I needed in retrospect. Uh, but this goes from the preamp that serves the theater through the room to the projector. I've been wanting to kind of augment my HDMI signaling between the display devices and the rack system and actually with good timing in conjunction with that RUI Pro reached out to me and said hey we've got a new generation of cable you know would you like to check it out and it's like hey I was gonna buy some more of your cables anyway might as well take this opportunity to go ahead and get what I need and standardize my installation on essentially all of this kind of new version of the cable. This remains an HDMI 2.1 fiber optic active cable directional just like the prior generation blue green one. A couple key differences though this one is actually HDMI 2.1 certified now which is great um, and it has a slightly different I guess what they say upgraded design sense it's a different kind of cable wrap I believe it's supposed to be more flexible more bendable and that sort of thing it does look I got to get the blue green ones down, but it does look a little bit thicker, just ever so slightly thicker. Um, otherwise, I think the connections are pretty, pretty similar. And so, hey, why not, you know, why not always get on the latest generation, the newest release of the stuff? So I've been happy with this uh, brand of cable. They are available on Amazon. That's where I bought all of my blue green ones. Um, and it lives up to its specs, even the non-certified uh, blue green ones this whole time, uh, over a 33 foot cable length. I have been successfully uh, running the RTX gaming PC previously with like uh, multiple generations actually of video cards uh, over the last couple of years on this cable, 3080s, 3090s, now a 4090. Uh, every one of those HDMI 2.1 bits, the 48 gigabit per second, a PC outputting 4K at 120 hertz with video level 444 color at 12 bit is basically saturating 48 gigabit per second. And I'm happy to say that I haven't had uh, a signaling problem, an HDMI sync problem, or anything like that using these cables. In fact, one of the times, the time I think I was pulling the second blue green one through, I was pulling on one end and I didn't realize it, but I really pinched that cable hard. And to the point where, oh shoot, it's fiber optic. I wondered if I was going to break it. I, I, I untwisted it, got it, got it back out straight and all that and said, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with it. And it, it still worked uh, to this day with no problems. I'm also happy to say that through multiple generations of preamplifiers in the home theater system, talking about going like from a, a the, the prior Marantz uh, 7704 that I had to the AVM 70 Anthem with the 4K HDMI boards and then now the AVM 90 with the 8K HDMI board going to the uh, multiple JVC projectors, mostly the, the NX7 though over that time. Again, no, no, no troubles uh, from Apple TV, from Kaleidoscape and, and such, anything, you know, no, no more than any normal HDMI troubles, I guess, than anybody has at some times. I'm happy again with the cable, happy with the brand, and was planning to basically stick with it anyway. But I'm actually stepping up the system a little bit. I got more, more of these guys uh, to put in. So what I'm actually going to do, hopefully standardizing the cabling and the cable runs uh, in, in the whole setup for some time to come, and giving me a little bit more flexibility to meet a couple of new goals that are mostly centered in the system around gaming is I'm gonna use the three 33 footers between the rack and the television. Uh, to date, again, I've been running two 33 footers directionally from the rack to behind the TV. One of those has carried video game signals, generally the PC. The other one has carried the Zone 2 HDMI output of the AVM90, formerly the AVM70, 
giving me the ability to switch my Kaleidoscape and be able to access the Kaleidoscape in the living room. I like accessing it in there, even though honestly I don't really watch movies on it in there. So from a critical system perspective, it's completely unnecessary. We use it in the theater predominantly. Uh, but I do like to record Kaleidoscape content for the channel. Sometimes that's a lot easier to do it in the living room. And again, just having that system flexibility. So I'm going to maintain two runs, uh, two runs of these cables from the rack to the television. Again, they're directional, unfortunately. So you can't just, it'd be nice if I could just have the cables and not worry necessarily about direction. But when you have active cables, you have fiber optic cables, there's transmitters, there's receiver pieces and stuff to it. And so it is what it is. These cables are always going to end up uh, directional in that way. But with the third cable, I'm going to pull it in the opposite direction. So we're going to take one cable from behind the television down to the rack. And you might say, well, why would I want to do that? Well, if I make the transition potentially either back to council using the PlayStation 5, I probably want the PlayStation 5 actually sitting in the living room. Or in some cases, I've been in and out of pain points with the with the gaming PC downstairs and controller reliability. Trying to game in the living room with the gaming source down in the basement has not always been the most reliable experience, particularly in the last couple of years with Xbox controllers for whatever reason. I think Microsoft uh, kind of screwed the pooch a little bit, so to speak, on, on the reliability of their drivers and their wireless connectivity of their controllers. So this will give me the flexibility then to be able to have a gaming source upstairs that could be routed to the upstairs television, but also additionally be routed to the downstairs system, which gives me access to route that then into the theater using an HDMI splitter. I have been experimenting with this for a little while now, this Easy Coup uh, HDMI 2.1, full capable, all the specs, all the things. One in, two out HDMI splitter with EDID selection. And I can say it's been working really great. I have had the PC downstairs split to the living room and to the home theater. But again, if I have that PlayStation and I put it upstairs, maybe I'll be putting the splitter upstairs locate the council in the living room for a, a number of beneficial reasons. Again, controller reliability wirelessly, just general access to the council, wired access directly for controllers like fight sticks if I want to ever finally actually pick up Street Fighter VI or, or some other fighting games. Uh, and then I can have the splitter behind the television and I can make that other run now down into the AVM90. I would imagine that sitting in the theater with a wireless controller in hand with the council essentially directly in the room above me will work more reliably uh, wirelessly through the floor and stuff than sitting over and up in the living room and having the or having the gaming source down here with the rack in the storage room. The other thing, and then this is also again part and parcel of gaming, I went with two or got two cables here capable of getting me essentially dual runs from the preamp the AVM90 to the projector. Historically, I've only ran a single HDMI to do that, and I've generally been fine with that, uh, more or less kind of keeping the projector in one set of settings, both for video content and for gaming content. Um, however, I think as we get into like the JVC NZ generation level of projectors, I think that there's enough um, settings that likely needs to be different now for maximizing a gaming source versus maximizing a, a video source. And rather than trying to use control four and program in settings, changes, and stuff like that, I think it's simpler to just run two cables. The AVM90 has two main zone HDMI outputs that are essentially mirror images of each other. So instead you run two HDMI outputs from the preamp both to the same display and you make HDMI 1 essentially like the movie watching input, HDMI 2 the gaming input. That will be very easily programmable into Control 4 and probably much more reliable in terms of executing, executing those input changes and all of that. And now I can dedicate those inputs and set them up discreetly. I've been running the TV in the living room very much this way essentially with discrete inputs for all the sources going there, Apple TV, Switch, gaming PC for now for the longest time, and Kaleidoscape, and they all really demand very different settings on the display itself. And so this is no different here on the projector with, again, very different settings relative to video versus gaming inputs. 
These will be really easy to pull, thankfully. Um, I just run them through my channels and take the, blue, the single blue-green cable out. And I can downsize them as well, because 50 feet, I think, will get me there comfortably. Whereas that blue-green cable is 65. I've got a big old coil of extra wire kind of just hanging in the back of the rack. It'll eliminate a little bit of extra cable cruft. The other thing, the other benefit, I, I think, of doing uh, double cables to the projector like this is I surmise that the Techthusiasm Home Theater, before very long here, who knows, maybe still within this calendar year, certainly into 2024, I hope, is going to be doing more with video processing. Again, I had the Lumigen for a little while, and I've got some other conversations afoot. We'll see, ultimately, what I get, how long I get it for, what ends up staying. But I, I guarantee that in the long run, I want to own a really nice video processor in my setup. And of course, the video processor applies to video content. It does not apply to gaming content. You wouldn't want to try to run gaming systems through a, a video processor. And yes, some of the video processors, they do have like an HDMI type of like secondary output, a non-processed second output. Uh, but I like... I, I like the consistency of kind of setting up my system more, more directly, let's say, around the video processor. So by doing uh, essentially two runs to the projector, again, I'll have one H the main HDMI out of the, the AVM90, uh, will then, would then be able to go in to the video processor, and then the video processor can come out uh, one of these cables to the projector. Meanwhile, the other one, of course, can just bypass the video processor altogether, go directly to the projector, and we would set up that input with all of the necessary configurations, again, to maximize gaming, low latency input, and stuff like that. Again, I think it's been less of a concern in the, in the NX7 generation where you can turn on gaming low latency. And my understanding is that it doesn't turn off a whole bunch of other things that the projector can do to enhance image and image processing for video purposes. But I, my understanding is the NZ is not, not the same way. And so in some other models of projectors and stuff that I would be looking at, uh, turning on things for game mode turns off some things for video, and it would be nicer to be able to have those things be individually discrete. So I have to admit, I'm really not looking forward to this. This is going to be a several hour project going back into holes in my ceilings and trying to pull cables through some really, really tight fits. Um, I hope that I'm not overestimating the fact that I can get uh, three of these cables together plus the optical cable that I still need, need to maintain through the, through the framing, essentially, of the, of the space behind the television up there. Um, so yeah, this is not what I call fun home theater tinkering. I, I have a lot more fun, uh, or I will have a lot more fun here soon, I think, putting in the NAD M28 amplifiers than doing this. But my son's going to help me out. We'll waste a little bit of a Saturday. Hopefully this goes smoothly. I'm not going to completely kind of vlog the whole polling activity because who wants to see me um, getting all frustrated and everything with it. Uh, but I'll, I'll give a little idea here before we end of specifically my runs and kind of the, the details of, of what we'll be doing. And, and yeah, so if you are interested in these cables, though, again, RUI Pro, I've used these for a long time and I've used them to the limits of their bandwidth. They haven't failed me yet. I hope that uh, I hope that the crystal cables you know, live up to, meet or exceed um, everything that the blue-green cables have given me for, for quite a while here already. So let's take a look at the specific runs that we're going to be pulling. All right, so down here in the storage room, of course, I was just standing over to the side of my rack for all of that talking head part of the video. But I've got this big old mess of cables that comes up behind my rack. And you can see the two little blue-green cables that come up with the big, uh, big glob of wiring there. And kind of shoot off to the left again those are the two 33 foot cables i'm going to have to do something better um, basically i had some stick on like cable holders and over time they've basically unstuck from the walls so i'm going to have to do something better to really affix those cables up against between the junction there of the ceiling and the and the wall itself a little hard to see i guess maybe i should have taken this stuff down first but right next to that to that red and white cooler can see there's a little bit of an orange box there that's a cut open in the ceiling that gets me in essentially to the floor joist into the header of the wall um, and gives me the, sh the shoot that I need to go over and across and get essentially underneath the television so I got to unstick that little paper panel that covers that up 
and we'll get the cables through that. That's the first pull, pull number one. This might be a little hard to see, but I think the camera is showing it. So we're now in the theater. That orange square is essentially on the other side of this wall, right up at the junction corner um, of that wall in that ceiling. And so that same header runs just along the back side of that white ceiling trim. And then we opened up another one of these little square panels before to be able to have access, get our hands in and pull cable through. So cable pull number one goes from the box on the other side of the wall through this header and I have access to it in this opening right here. It's another just black, uh, black paper panel that I kind of tape up there. It's very dark. Nobody can notice it. Nobody can see it, but I can take it down and have access to that. This kind of kitty corner is over just a little bit to the right, and we go up through the floor, and we come out uh, essentially right under the left subwoofer in the living room. Right, and then of course here we are up in the living room got my big built-in tv 2.2 channel set up here but just again just underneath this speaker down inside the bump out of this cavity we have a hole drilled through the floor to come up uh, through that other access down in the theater and then those cables kind of snake through the back of the wall and they come out just underneath this panel here so here you are here's the two RUI HDMIs, here's my optical that's ran there, and then we're able to junction uh, right into the television. I guess I can never buy a television that has its I.O. down on the far right side. I'll be, I'll be limited to televisions that only have I.O. here on the left. This has worked well for nigh on 10 years, essentially, of running HDMI cables this way, and it's a pain to pull them. I didn't do a good enough of a job making the pull simple. I could have made it so much easier when we kind of engineered everything to begin with. Lesson learned for sure, but hopefully we, we get these cables pulled here today. And then with this setup, they will be, they will be fixed for a quite a long while to come. So I got to start deconstructing everything and then figure out the pulling structure to get them through. All right, pull phase one complete. So the subwoofer is out. And you can kind of see now a little bit more of the cavity that's in there. The cable's coming up through the floor header, and then they go through the two by four right there. They cut through the wall and they come out. But we've already got, my son and I, we got all three of the new crystal cables pulled. You can see how I did it. Basically just pulled the optical back through and uh, used some string and some electrical tape. Got them all together there. Made sure to leave the caps on so that no dust and debris gets inside the tip of the HDMI cable. So then we got them all <laughs> laid out here through the room. So next step here, I'm gonna take off all the tape, get them pulled to kind of an equal length, and then we'll get the other ends pulled through down to the theater room below. This was the step that I was most afraid of, something going wrong, something not fitting, and while wow, they just zipped, they zipped right through. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to the home theater gods on that one. All right, so we got the cables all the way pulled through to the rack of the TV. Subwoofers back in. You can kind of see them, all three of them there hanging down. Again, two displays and one source end on this side. We're going to hook up that new PlayStation 5 Slim on those brackets over there on the far right. Get it up on the splitter so we can try and run it to both rooms, see how that works. Now I just got to finish cleaning up and buttoning everything up. All right, back in the storage room, we're all connected. I Closed up the hole again over there. Got the all of our debris, all of our stuff back up on the shelves. But you can see the three silver cables and the optical now nicely running together. I had them a little entangled with the speaker wire. The speaker wire coming out, that kind of blue circle, those are for the tops, the overhead speakers in the theater. But the four, the three cables, sorry, coming down and then down with the rest of my cable, a nest of cables, all but nicely all cleaned up, wired up, we're plugged in. I gotta get these now identified and we'll test both of them out. So I'll have more on this. I'll kind of follow up in a future vlog uh, or whatnot and definitely more coming on the idea of splitting sources to multiple rooms and some of the ramifications of doing that. So there you go, RUI Pro, the newer model, HDMI 2.1 certified. Crystal cables, silver clearest jackets. 
again, I've been using RUI Pro for years and I've been very happy. Cables have always worked. They've been really stable. And so if you're looking for long distance fiber optic cables, there you go. Amazon, I'll have some links down in the description below. Um, affiliate links, if you wouldn't mind, feel free to use them. Awesomely helps the channel out. Always more to tinker with, always more to play with, and more to come as the theater and the setups and all of that advance. And a little spoiler alert, I just had the M28s delivered this morning as well. Please do all that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video. And uh, again, if you wouldn't mind supporting the channel, shop at my affiliates down in the description. Thanks so much for watching and come on back for more home theater discussion and fun.